there seems to be no limit to Joe DeSimone's imagination. As a material scientist, entrepreneur, and professor at both the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and North Carolina State University, DeSimone is expanding our understanding of polymers, or plastics. These are chains of chemical compounds that make possible so many things to improve our lives. Looking at what others have seen and thinking about things differently in that context really opens up new ideas on uh, new types of materials, new applications for those materials, and all sorts of things that you, you didn't anticipate once you got into that particular field. Among D. Simone's most important contributions is the development of a greener method for manufacturing Teflon. We developed a process that uses uh, carbon dioxide, which is what we exhale. So what we're able to do is tap that waste stream of CO2, use that directly in a process for we're making Teflon to replace water. And so after we let the CO2 pressure down, uh, the polymer precipitates, and we're able to simply filter it out. And this is uh, basically a Teflon resin made directly in CO2 without any uh, harmful surfactants and detergents. It also resulted in new and better types of Teflon. So we're actually making better grades and new grades of those kinds of materials that uh, opened up some new performance characteristics that you couldn't meet with the current products. Another breakthrough involving polymers was the development of a drug-eluting bioabsorbable stent. Drug-eluting stents have been used following coronary angioplasty since 2003. But since they're metal, these stents remain in the blood vessel, even after their drugs have been delivered. I mean, the body heals itself after angioplasty, but you're left with a permanent prosthetic. So why have a permanent prosthetic for a temporary healing issue is sort of the whole premise behind the, the bioresorbable stents. So D. Simone worked with a team of scientists, engineers, and physicians led by Dr. Richard Stack, an interventional cardiologist from UNC's arch rival, Duke. It wasn't basketball season, so it was okay. D. Simone's contribution was to devise a way that a polymer-based stent could perform like a metal stent, but then be absorbed by the body. We built prototypes, we put them in animals, showed the efficacy of the technology, measured the right properties that show that it was going to work. And it looks like one of the brightest spots out there in the whole uh, stent marketplace, so it's been a lot of fun. So this was a polymer replica molded from that. Fun for Joe D. Simone is engaging with colleagues and students, challenging them to think creatively and allowing himself to be mentored by them. The number one thing that we talk about is we're going to do some things that are new to the world. Therefore, I don't know them either. We're going to learn this together. Can we orient these molecules in an, in an external field? In it's that intellectual curiosity, being unafraid of what he doesn't know, that makes Jody Simone's inventiveness so exhilarating. I think there's a lot of people in science that are pretty guarded about what they don't know. And I've never been one to do that. I'm, I'm happy to say, look, I don't know anything about that, but here's what I do know. And if you bring in a different trajectory, you often think about things very differently. And uh, there's an advantage to that. D. Simone's latest project is perhaps his most groundbreaking. Venturing into the brave new world of nanomedicine, he's developed a fabrication process to make nanobioagents for imaging and treatment therapies. What we really wanted to do was control the size of the particle, the shape of the particle, that had the right chemical characteristics so that you could deliver it exactly where you wanted it and in a time sequence way uh, that you could deliver it when you wanted it and then when it got there it could fall apart to release the cargo. Think of it as a smart bomb for delivering chemotherapy agents directly to various organs in your body. Making it commercially viable, though, meant De Simone needed to create a polymer mold to produce the agents by the millions. On this particular mold, we've got cavities of different sizes and shapes, and that allows us to now systematically make particles of different sizes and shapes, and we can look at the influence of that size and shape on biodistribution. We're trying to lay out definitive biodistribution maps so that we can now target and detarget different organs based on those characteristics of sizes and shapes. At Liquidia Technologies, the company he co-founded, De Simone relies on the semiconductor industry as the inspiration for his own nanomold technology. So we really tried to bridge the emerging technologies from the semiconductor industry 
used to make transistors and applying those to making nanocarriers in medicine. Making connections between diverse technologies is how Joe DeSimone views scientific challenges as inventive opportunities. It's that unique vision that's allowing him to reshape the material world. <laughs>